Thank you all for coming to Delano. Thanks for being at Delano. I thought I might come out and have a little fun with you and do my best Randy Quaid imitation from what was it? Christmas vacation? With the uh, robe and the galoshes, but I think we'll do it in a professional way today. I, uh, I, I have a few words that uh, I want to give you, uh, and then uh, I'll answer a couple questions if you want us to. You okay? Got it. <laughs> uh, Jackie and I and our family started this journey over 17 months ago, and it has absolutely been one of the best experiences of our lives. Traveling this state, we have been constantly reminded of the goodness and kindness of Minnesotans and the genuine love we all have for this great state. We met people in War Road, in Zambroda, in Winona, in East Grand Forks, in Duluth, in Worthington, in Bemidji, and Owatonna. We met construction workers, truck drivers, we met college professors and CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and they all have one thing in common, a love of Minnesota and its people, and a fundamental desire to keep this state the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. I share that love of Minnesota and its people, and I have worked to serve this state to the best of my ability. I spent the past 16 months working to become governor because I have a vision of how best to meet the challenges we face over the next 40 years. I put forth that vision, offered it to Minnesotans, and asked them to put their faith in us to do what is right for this state. And as you know, almost a million Minnesotans agreed with us on where this state needs to go. Regardless of the outcome, we can be extremely proud of what we accomplished. Against all odds, a political outsider a family man with a small business background, secured a major party endorsement and ran on a populist message that government must be redesigned and reformed to serve the people and not the other way around. Our campaign came from, from virtual obscurity and came within about 8,700 votes of accomplishing what many predicted was not possible, a common sense conservative winning the governor's race in the state of Minnesota on a message of smaller government, individual liberty, and economic freedom. This is a testament to the people that encouraged us, supported us, and who worked so hard for us over the past several months. I cannot begin to thank everyone personally. The list is simply too long. I do, however, want to thank my friend David Fitzsimmons and everyone else who was there from the beginning. I want to thank Tony and Bridget Sutton. I want to thank Jack and Annette Meeks. I can go on and on. There are just simply too many of, and I see a lot of you, and I'm looking at you right now. Thank you so much for everything you've done for Jackie and I and our family, and more importantly, for the message that we were delivering. Most of all, I want to thank my family and my incredible wife, Jackie. If there is one regret we should all have, it is that this state will not get to experience Jackie as the First Lady. I expect and I do hope you will ask him that even Mark Dayton will agree with me on that. This election has never been about us. It wasn't about Tom and Jackie Emmer. It wasn't about which party, Democrat or Republic, Republican, should govern this state. It was and always has been about offering our vision to Minnesotans and asking for their support. Well, Minnesotans made their choice by however thin a margin, and we respect that choice. Now is the time for all of us to come together and do what is best for Minnesota. Yes, the integrity of our elections is of supreme importance to the health of a representative republic. The citizens must have confidence in the election system and the outcome, whether they are pleased with the outcome or not. At the same time, it is imperative that we, and this is from Jackie and I, that we allow the next legislature and the next governor to move ahead with the people's business, the business of governing this state. The Supreme Court has ruled that local, official, uh, local election officials may count names on voting rosters or receipts when counting ballots against voters in each precinct. The court, however, left open the issue of reconciliation, acknowledging that that process was not performed in every precinct. Uh, you'll find it if you look at the opinion in the footnote on page six. It was in a footnote. Arguably, this leaves the door open for a lawsuit contesting the election. Some have suggested that I should consider contesting the election if any good faith basis exists, because Minnesota might then have a Republican governor and a Republican legislature until the contest is resolved. 
I disagree. We must address the questions raised by recent elections in this state, but I do not believe a delay in seating the next governor will help to unite us or move our state forward. While we should not be surprised if there are citizens who might still pursue claims to attempt to address the integrity of our election system, it will not be an election contest and I will not be involved. Instead, I will devote my time to bring public awareness to these issues and the need, the need for election reform, including, but not necessarily limited to, requiring a photo ID for voting. In the meantime, Mark Dayton is going to be seated as the next governor of the state of Minnesota, and it is our job to make sure that he can be the best governor he can possibly be. That doesn't mean agreeing with him all the time. I suspect there may be a disagreement or two, but it does mean giving him and his administration the respect it deserves. Mark Dayton was not elected to be governor of Minnesota Democrats. He was elected to be the governor of the state of Minnesota. We congratulate him and we offered to help him in any way we can. Thank you again so much for being part of this experience and being here today. Uh, thanks for uh, standing out in the cold. This is my kind of weather. I can guarantee you one thing, folks. There's not a mosquito flying anywhere in the state of Minnesota today. Tom, what was the final thing that made you make this decision? Uh, you know, a lot of things, a lot of factors uh, to work into this. Why did you decide now is the time to step aside? Well, actually, Tom, a great question. Uh, when is the right time? I mean, really what we did uh, was just follow the process that uh, the law requires. So it's not a matter of stepping aside. Your, your question, not to push back, as I usually do, but it's more why are you making this announcement today as opposed to uh, before. As I made it clear on Friday, there are some things that we need to look at uh, in the state of Minnesota when it comes to our election process, making sure that ballots match the number of people that voted. Uh, and we have different opinions about that, but we all care about the integrity of the outcome. Uh, it, in my opinion, once I saw what the uh, Supreme Court ruled yesterday, uh, there's a uh, possibility that you wait and see what the statewide voter registration system says on uh, the 15th of December. You know what? Mark Dayton needs to get started on the business of governing this state. Did you, you call Mark Dayton? Morning? Did you call Mark Dayton? And what did you say? Talk to talk to Mark Dayton. What about uh, half hour ago? Talked to Mark and uh, told him exactly what I was doing today. We had a fairly good relationship, I, I would suggest, uh, throughout the entire election process. Uh, he was a gentleman to uh, Jackie and myself throughout. Uh, I hope he would say the same thing about us. And uh, he offered to go out to lunch in the next couple of weeks and talk about where the state is going, which we may take him up on. I invited him over, of course, to uh, skate on the rink in the backyard. Do you agree with the punishments that the party has given to those Republicans who chose not to support you and said to support you? You know, Esme, I appreciate the question, but it's not, not about that today. I mean, I'm here today because I think there comes a time when you uh, y you have to stand up and say, look, uh, it's been a great experience uh, traveling this state. My family and I have learned things that uh, people might never get an opportunity to learn during their lifetime. Uh, it's time for us today to be gracious, say the process is run according to the law. Uh, yes, there are questions that still need to be answered, but you know what? Where we sit today, it's time to uh, recognize that the next governor of the state of Minnesota will be Mark Dayton. Does the latest poll have any play in your decision? Are the polls saying that the public wanted to be I, the, the question is, do the latest poll have uh, any, no. <laughs> no, I, I'm not, uh, I think if I, and I don't know that you and I have ever had a chance to sit down and get to know each other, but. I'm not a guy who sits down and puts my finger up to the wind and says, what is the uh, current wind blowing out there? I, it really comes down to the election. There were 2.2 million ballots cast on November 2nd of 2010. I, despite that enormous number, I, and two guys that both have about a million votes each, we're within 8,700 some votes. Uh, the law requires certain processes to be followed. Uh, we believe, and still, I, I, I will look back and I, I think we've got to talk about how you balance the number of voters to the number of ballots that are cast and counted and make sure that legitimate voters are voting in the election. But at this point, I'm satisfied we've gone through the process as the law requires and uh, it, it's time to stand up and say we need to move on. Will you run for office again? Will you run for office again? 
I, you know, I think the Lions Club has an opening, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I think that's, uh, you know what, uh, it's funny, Tom, uh, we've known each other for a long time, and I can honestly say that when we were playing pony hockey back in the early 70s, I never would have guessed that this is where life would have led us. I'm not going to predict where it's going to go from here. The only thing I know is that I'm married to the best uh, girl I possibly could have been married to, and i got a great family. We'll see what the rest of life has to offer. What is your decision alone? Is the party on the same page as you? Tony Sutton has been an absolute gentleman. Uh, he has done everything that he possibly can to make sure that certain questions are answered. You know, he's answering the whole different group of people. Uh, and it's it's uh, not different, but it's a, he's got a different uh, thing that he's doing every day. I made this decision with uh, Jackie and my family based on uh, our view of what we're looking at. And I think Tony Sutton uh, has not only been supportive of that, but uh, he respects it. So how hard was this on the family? It looks like you broke I've told you before, uh, Mary, and I know that you've looked at me and said you're, you can't be that big, tough, uh, old piece of leather. There is no crying in politics, and I've told my, uh, my family's been great. You know, here's the deal. I don't take it personal. For me, it's business. Uh, it's about people that have disagreements, differences of opinion, but uh, at the end of the day, we got to shake hands and all live in the same state in the same great country and figure out how to make it work for ourselves. I, I have to honor the fact that we'll be uh, absolutely having little hugs later with everybody in the family because they, they take it personal. It's very personal. What's next for Tom Emmer? What's next for Tom Emmer? Well, I, I hear the uptake might have an opening, so... <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you have been a gentleman too. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Tom. Yeah. What would you You know, I, I think right now, let's uh, stay. Uh, and Rachel, I, today is about uh, you know closure. This this uh, chapter closes and a new chapter begins. Uh, Minnesota has a new set of leaders. Uh, I'm honored to have been part of the process, and I hope that uh, by our effort, uh, my, my own, the, all these great people that have helped us and worked so hard, and my family, I hope that we've had a little bit of an impact on that message as we go forward as a state. And I think it's, it's important for us to recognize, you know what, we've done some great things. Nobody ever expected us to be here today, let alone get through this whole process. So I think at this point forward, rather than saying, well, this is what we need to change, this is the problem, let's stay up here and let's talk about the great things that uh, we all agree on as Democrats and Republicans. When, it's, when the election's over, let's get on with the business of governing the state of Minnesota and let's see how we can make this an even better place. With four weeks hindsight, is there anything we can go no, back and in the future message, future message, and 9,000 more votes? <laughs> well, Jackie uh, has said to me over and over, uh, Jackie, if she could have a uh, another place to live, she'd be up north. I think she told Fitzsimmons she would have done every parade up north. That's, uh, uh, you know, say something. it's, uh, realistically, I'm always going to be very proud of something. And I don't know how many people noticed, but uh, we never went negative. People tell me that you got to be negative, you got to do this and that. i got these kids. I coach kids. You know, I, I understand negative works. I've heard from some of your uh, colleagues in the media, yeah, but it works. You know, there have been studies that show, so what? I think the truth works too. And I think we came within 8,700 votes of accomplishing something that uh, not a lot of people uh, thought we could do. Uh, and we did it the right way. And I can always look at my kids and say, you see, no matter what people tell you about doing that, if you just stay up here, you can always look yourself in the mirror and know you did the right thing and you handled it with class and integrity uh, and you never have to apologize for that. So I don't know that I changed much. I will tell you, I learned an awful lot. I think Jack did too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> no, the bigger question is, are you going to miss me? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'll be around, Esme. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank it's you. been Thank great you. getting to know you guys. Thank you. Thank In a different way. As opposed to the guy who was always used to asking the questions, it, it's interesting to learn how to have to answer the questions. Thank you. 
I don't know. I, I, you know what? I, I don't think uh, if you would have asked me a year and a half ago, two years ago, if I would have done this. So it's possible. I would have told Yeah, and I, I think I probably would have told you, no way. I remember when David Fitzsimmons asked me in June of 2009. I told him, absolutely not. Why would anybody <laughs> want to do that? So you might. The, the more that I got... Uh, the more I got thinking about it, it it's you can't, you shouldn't stay in the legislature your whole life. You know, if you're going to serve, serve a short period of time. I don't know what that is. I mean, I've suggested term limits of 12 years. You know, there's a short period of time that you should serve, and then you got to get out. And I, I think for me, the timing was right, and Jackie's statement was, what's the worst that can happen? You definitely will raise the level of the discussion, the intensity of the debate. She said, maybe you go out there, fall flat on your face, we get back to raising our family and running the business. And lo and behold, 17 months later, I'm standing here on a beautiful December day <laughs> in Minnesota. So do you feel like you fell flat on your face as you decided? No. No, I don't. I, I feel like I had one of those life-changing experiences that uh, I will always be grateful that the good Lord gave us. All right. Reps, I'm over to you. Continue raising money to cover your cross or is that done? Oh, all this negative <laughs> question. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm sure that uh, business will go on at the party and, uh, you know, things will get paid and taken care of. Everything's good. Where should we expect to find you in a month? Do you have any job lined up, any possibilities? Rachel, uh, every day is a possibility in my world, all right? Uh, that's been my attitude from day one. I will tell you that there will be a standing invitation to you and anybody else. Come on over during the winter. We'll be out back skating. I got a rink to work on. That's my number one uh, concern and playing with some kids that have been working with me for a lot of months. It's time for me to work with them. Was there a point the last month when you thought you would win this race? Oh, yeah, absolutely. When? When I thought I'd win it? Oh, gosh. Oh, you know what? You're going back to the uh, election issue. It's time to, uh, for people to, to uh, celebrate the fact that the election's done. Mark Dayton's going to be seated as the next governor, and let's get on with the business of governing the state. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.